I mean, it was kind of a shock. That's the biggest earthquake I've ever been in. I mean, I was asleep on the couch downstairs, and then, you know, you wake up. I thought it was a thunderstorm, and then all of a sudden I see the chandelier in the dining room shaking. Everything's, you know, things that are on tables are falling off. I hear glass breaking. All new at 530, residents and officials in California are cleaning up after a magnitude 6.0 earthquake shook residents awake yesterday morning. Now we're asking what the chances are of a big one hitting Indiana. Just last month, we showed you this map from the U.S. Geological Survey. It reflects the expanded earthquake risk and the new Madrid seismic zone. That zone includes Indiana. A series of earthquakes up to magnitude 8.1 devastated that area in 1811 and 1812. Our Chris Prophet went to IU to talk to seismologists about what this means for Indiana. Chris. IU measures seismic activity from around the world, and that California earthquake showed up in a big way here. Now, the university's Department of Geology, their seismograph, measured that 6.0 jolt on Sunday morning. It also has measured the occasional earthquake rumbling across Indiana, the last strong one, in 2008. There are several fault lines in and near the state, and experts say that California's earthquake is a strong reminder that parts of 42 states, including Indiana, are at risk of earthquakes during the next 50 years. I think it's not a, uh, a good idea to simply ignore the hazard and say this is something that will never take place in our lives. I think it's uh, the job of the, the government, private organizations, individual citizens to take a kind of strategic look at the future, identify what are reasonable ha hazards that we might expect in our lifetimes, and take reasonable precautions. The one we really have to worry about is the, the New Madrid fault. It runs through Missouri and Tennessee, ending in Memphis. A, a major earthquake along that line could cause significant damage to Evansville, and they've had to incorporate that when they put in new buildings. They don't quake-proof them, but they do allow for movement in case of an earthquake. This is one thing that we have to pay attention to. Since we live in the Midwest, most people don't think about it, but experts told me today here at IU, think about it as you would prepare for a tornado to keep emergency supplies and also to know where you would shut off the gas lines that come into your house. Reporting live at Indiana University in Bloomington, Chris Prophet, RTV6. We have more details for you now about the history of earthquakes right here in Indiana. According to a database search on the USGS National Earthquake Information Center and the Indiana Geological Survey, Indiana has had its fair share of earthquakes with an epicenter in the state. The most recent being a 3.8 earthquake, which originated in Greentown in Howard County back in December 2010. In September 2004, there was a 3.8 earthquake near Shelbyville. 2002, a 4.6 earthquake rattled the state near Evansville.